Chufud Kale is an astonishing ancient city, argued by mainstream historians as dating back only to medieval times. However, this we suspect is possibly due to it being documented during this time as having served as a fortress within the Crimean mountains. A national monument of Crimean Karatis culture, although argued to be fairly recent archaeology, we believe, however, that upon closer inspection, a far more intriguing, far older story for its origins begins to appear. Identifiable advanced features so often discussed here on our channel, found throughout the ancient world, remnants indicative of a far older, far greater, technologically advanced group having once been responsible. A group who had access to knowledge and stone-cutting technology that has not only left the same signature scars all over the planet, an investigative undertaking we have previously explored regarding similarities and differentiations to identify signature methods, an ongoing investigation in an attempt to identify separate, lost, highly advanced civilizations, and most importantly, how many there were. The site was clearly built by a group who were also capable of quarrying and placing enormous stones, sometimes over 1,000 tons in weight, atop one another. Many people are aware of the remarkable underground city known as Derinkuyu, a settlement we have covered in the past. A gigantic ruin carved straight down 80 meters into the bedrock, rumored to have been lit using a pipe system which teased natural gases out of the strata lighting a candle-sized flame at regular intervals throughout its entire structure. We know of this amazing ruin due to its incredible rediscovery. When a local purchased a property in the area, he set about doing some renovations. However, upon knocking down a wall in the house, he was confronted with the entrance to an amazing site. This in turn attracted the media, thus Derinkuyu's public popularity, regardless of its controversial nature, was cast in stone, with rather difficult to explain origins. However, Chufut Kale, although itself a partially underground, partially above ground, yet no less incredible ancient city, also carved with incredible precision from the bedrock of Earth. The site was discovered and studied in depth initially by mainstream funded individuals. As such, predictably, it has subsequently been little shared publicly. This, regardless of its incredible nature, its prehistoric appearance, and the fact that it even appears to be older than its more famous counterpart, Derinkuyu. The site is largely ignored, and this is undoubtedly due to the institutionalized powers that be, who constantly monitor and thus control the financial incentives. Anyone requesting exploratory funding whether within such fields as education, archaeology, or history, will simply be refused any application for a funded expedition. This reluctance to approve any in-depth public exploration of the site has long kept the lid on these ruins, and we feel for good reason. For although Chufut Kale was once masterfully carved from solid stone, created to house many hundreds of families and individuals, the erosion present on the site is also staggering. Many of the once refined chambers are slowly losing their form and returning to nature, with some caverns seemingly identical in appearance to many sites academia would simply dismiss as natural formations. Yet regardless of this dismissal and the deliberate overlooking of its grandeur by certain fields of study, we find Chufut Kale highly compelling. Over the past few weeks, the channel has been focusing on the many Neolithic ruins which can still be found littering our planet. Enigmatic earthworks, built in a bygone age, supposedly by our primitive, flint-wielding ancestors. Enormous ancient undertakings, like that of the Long Barrows or Solstice-aligned mounds such as Newgrange. We also explored dolmens, found the world over 
along with many other recurring Neolithic features. However, there still remains many as yet unexplained, yet clearly excellently executed ruins that, due to the capabilities of their past constructor, fortunately still exist to this day. Ancient supposed Neolithic ruins, such as that of the effigy mounds. It seems, regardless of the gigantic effort these would have once been, for currently claimed architects, these effigy mounds, such as that of the Great Serpent Mound of Ohio, the largest surviving mound of this type, were created merely for entertainment purposes, or perhaps as an offering to the gods. We are, in the modern age, fully aware of serpent worship, once undertaken by ancient civilizations across South America. And due to these already understood ancient belief systems, the possibility that these unexplained mounds may have been religiously motivated becomes a logical postulation. The Great Serpent Mound is 1,348 feet long and runs along the landscape continually 3 feet high. It is claimed by some as Neolithic, yet no one seems to be able to definitively determine its age. A prehistoric effigy, located upon a plateau, aptly named Serpent Mound Crater in Adams County, Ohio. Now maintained by the Ohio History Connection, it has been designated as a National Historic Landmark by the United States Department of Interior. The Serpent Mound of Ohio was first reported from surveys by Ephraim Squire and Edwin Davis in their historic volume Ancient Monuments of the Mississippi Valley published in 1848 by the newly founded Smithsonian Origin. We feel, due to its inexplicable nature, archaeologists will continue to find these incredible relics difficult to explain. As such, the origins of the mound are still heavily debated. The mound, like many other ruins we've covered, we posit were in fact left by a civilization far older than currently conceived, and as such, like the many similar sites and ruins we have explored, contains no archaeological artifacts, no burials, and no dating material, leaving academics with no later inhabitants to pin the site's construction on. As such, they remain incapable of establishing a permitted claim as to the age of the mound. The two main funded theories are that it was either created by the Adena culture around 320 BC or the Fort Ancient, around 1070 AD. However, these claims are both light in regards to any compelling lines of deference to argue said hypothesis. Archaeologists began attributing the mound to the Fort Ancient culture within the publication of Serpent Mound, a Fort Ancient Icon, in 1996. A 2017 article, Radiocarbon Dates, reveal Serpent Mound is more than 2,000 years old argues for a construction by the Adena culture, circa 320 BC, yet any solid data to confirm said claims remain elusive. The academic debate regularly experiences rebuttals, with each published in the Mid-Continental Journal of Archaeology. Who built the Great Serpent Mound, or indeed the Effigy Mounds as a whole? Were they, as we claim, the work of a now lost, serpent-worshipping civilization? Just like that of South America's inexplicable ruins, we find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. We are often confronted with peculiar, seemingly impossible artifacts that will, after some in-depth investigation, leave one with more questions than answers. This, either due to their enormous, often seemingly impossible sizes, megaliths in some locations weighing far over 1,000 tons, somehow, once used in their construction, sometimes set aloft, proof that not only were these stones hewn but moved and lifted seemingly with ease. But also, alas, the lack of public exposure many said sites are granted, often minimal at best, thus countless examples of advanced ancient technology remain still hidden here upon our planet. As a consequence, many have avoided scrutiny Details therein which are clearly of a controversial nature are conveniently absent any funded studies of said ruins. We feel ruins of great importance, but due to the strength of evidence one can surmount in support of past 
once highly advanced ancient civilizations at said locations, they are largely overlooked and actively avoided by funded archaeologists, academics, and historians alike en masse. Simply ignored, thus preventing all from what we feel is a birthright, an accurate, warts and all, transparent exploration of the origins of humanity and, in turn, the history of our planet. Allowing one and all to make up their own minds in regard to the origin of said sites, no matter how controversial. This is the exact reason for the channel's creation, and is the driving force behind the six books one intends to write. A revolutionary cataloging of once, yet no more, deliberately overlooked or academically dismissed sites, dotted all over the world. For when one explores our content, they will be made aware of a smorgasbord of unique and often inexplicable features which can be found all over Earth. In addition, it is not just the visible feats of ancient stoneworking that are the singular astonishing legacy left by a now lost, once highly advanced ancient civilization. For there are many other feats accomplished in a bygone era. Prehistoric mine shafts can still be found in many areas of Earth. Not only are there still existing, seemingly machine-cut, extremely ancient, incredibly deep mine shafts in a number of areas of Earth, including those featured found within Tel Aviv, are all but one among many relics, all clearly left by a capable group hidden from the world. But ancient cities exist also, ones covered previously, which were all once somehow cut from Earth's bedrock, that due to their location have fortunately been explored by a number of individuals over the years, never funded, but merely driven by curiosity. Thus, the true astonishing depth, and indeed the incredible achievement these once were, has all been previously documented. Civilizations that were once capable of not just digging these mines to incredible depths, but were, in fact, capable of creating entire temples from one gigantic solid stone, cut with such incredible artistic ability and accuracy, they are staggering examples of ancient engineering. In China and Japan, gigantic megaliths left, mysteriously abandoned, Easter Island, the unfinished obelisk Aswa, Egypt, Yangshan Quarry within China, all abandoned, with Yangshan possessing an almost detached megalith, clearly cut using incredible stone-cutting tools, a block estimated as weighing 16,000 tons when liberated from the bedrock. All these anomalies are but a few examples which support the premise of lost technology, knowledge, and an advanced civilization. It seems that the advanced minds, like those found in Tel Aviv, are but a tip of an archaeological iceberg in regards to the mystifying stone-cutting of a now lost antiquity. Why did humans placed within a lost chapter of antiquity exert such back-breaking effort in the attempt of extracting these precious metals? Who dug the Tel Aviv mines? Was it the same group who built ancient Peru? We find the evidence to suggest such highly compelling. Lake Superior the largest of the North American Great Lakes, it is also the largest freshwater lake in the world by surface area. Believed to have first been inhabited 10,000 years ago, after the retreat of the last ice age. However, there exists copper mines upon many of the lake's islands, which many researchers have concluded to be prehistoric. A sophisticated array of tunnels litters the islands, or more specifically, all of North America. Scarred by ancient mine pits as deep as 150 feet, carbon-14 testing of wood remains found in sockets of copper artifacts indicated they are at least 5,700 years old, although artifacts and evidence at some sites have suggested a date far older than what has been put forward. For example, some investigators believe that the mines were not even built by humans but are the remains of a sophisticated mining operation that was once undertaken by alien visitors many thousands of years ago. Similar in scale to the ancient Carolina mica mines, mica being a material which we use in electrical components. It must be noted that all of these prehistoric mines show evidence of being abruptly abandoned, 
whether this is evidence of the death of an unknown king or queen, or evidence for catastrophe is unknown. All along Lakeshore are vestiges of this once highly successful ancient operation. The most astonishing of remnants catalogued publicly has to be the enormous lump of pure copper found in 1771 near the bank of the Ontonagon River. In 1945, it was floated downriver on a raft by a James K. Paul and was eventually appropriated by an agent of the United States government. It was then shipped to Detroit and on to Washington, where it eventually slipped into the bowels of the Smithsonian. Known as the Ontonagon Boulder, it weighs 3,708 pounds. It was apparently well known to Native Americans. According to the Keweenaw Bay Indian community, the boulder was used by tribe members to make offerings to its manitou, or spirit, to seek improvement in their health and well-being. Just how old is the Ontonagon boulder? Or indeed, the mine from which it came? Although many would like you to believe the mines are less than 5,000 years of age, we think many factors surrounding them suggest that they are far older than that. Lajedo Jipai Matus, located within modern-day Brazil, is an incredible ancient site that, just like Gornia Shoria within Russia, is of such a tremendous age and the stones incorporated into its structure are of such a huge size that mainstream academics passionately attest to the site being merely geological. However, the megalithic wall located at the site, which is uncannily similar to many others, each claimed as geological. Yet the symmetry in the construction, the fact that the blocks are placed in what we now call stretcher courses, is a technique which can be seen within brick-built buildings all over the world. This unnatural, repetitive technique makes the walls the strongest possible, using single-layer blocks to build with. It is highly unlikely that this repeating pattern would appear naturally. However, there are many other features at the site that not only prove it was indeed an ancient settlement, now all but eroded back to nature, dolmens of a similar age, which litter the site, are arguably proof of an artificial origin, exposing what we have long claimed to have been a reality, that a now hidden civilization's ruins are being actively dismissed as nothing more than geological features. The site is approximately 1.5 square kilometers, and is home to about 100 large, rounded stones, each weighing up to 45 tons. Some of these stones have been placed upon tiny base stones, and others have seemingly been hollowed out from the base, making what is unquestionably some of the most intriguing ancient dolmens to be found anywhere on Earth. According to geologists who have explored the site, yet have seemingly ignored the evidence to suggest that many of these stones have artificial origins, the rock formation is the result of soil wear over millions of years due to natural cracks and large temperature variations. As aforementioned, the most curious and seemingly most famous block is the hollowed-out dolmen, which is commonly known as the helmet stone. Additionally, along with the Neolithic dolmens which litter the site, on some of the stones there are cave paintings, which are attributed to the Kareri Indians who lived in the region about 12,000 years ago. Legend has it that later, the site became the home of someone known as the Hermit Healer, an individual claimed to have lived in the region in around the 18th century. Many people from this area sought his consult, yet any concrete evidence as to who this individual was or what they were capable of has eluded modern understandings. We feel that due to the stretcher courses found within the megalithic wall, currently claimed as a natural formation, along with the evidence at the site of Neolithic dolmens, with surviving art, which also dates from this era, are all compelling proofs of an artificial, advanced, yet ancient and now hidden origin. Who built Legedo Gepaimatus? What was the site's original purpose? Just how old is Legedo Gepaimatus? Thankfully, the more people who explore the site and collect and compile photographic studies, the closer we will get to finally answering these burning questions regarding our past. It is a site which we find highly compelling.